Hello again. In this video, we're going to solve a word problem in which we have to use a quadratic equation and factor it using principle of zeros to solve that equation to get our answer. And this problem is by far one of the more um, tedious and intensive problems I could find. So bear with me as this might take quite some time. So let's read the problem first. It says the length of a rectangular frame is, and that's kind of a strong word in math, let me underline it, four centimeters more than the width. The area of the frame is 60 square centimeters. So they've told us a bit of information. They said we have a rectangular frame. So let's go ahead, we'll draw our rectangle. And there it is, pretty nice rectangle. And the length of the rectangular frame, so length, is equal to four centimeters more than the width. Now, I don't actually know what the width of this rectangular frame is. In fact, the problem never tells me. If you reread it again, it doesn't say width is anything. But I know the length of the rectangular frame is four more than whatever the width is. So I have the width and I have four more than that is my length. That's the more challenging part of this problem. So let's tear it apart where they say the word length, then they say some garbage. They say the word is, which tells you equal to, four more than means plus the width. So length equals four more than the width. And the width is still a mystery, so we're using W. Now they tell us the area of the frame, area is, so equal, to 60 centimeters squared. And if you notice, I've been leaving off my units. I'm going to worry about the units at the end when I have to find the perimeter of the frame. So in the end, that's what i got to find. Before I can even find the perimeter, in which perimeter, if we want to find it, is equal to, to bleh, let me try that again, perimeter equals 2 times L plus 2 times W, I need the L and the W. And I don't actually know what W is, and I know what L is in terms of W, but that still doesn't help me. The only real concrete information we were given is area is 60 centimeters squared. So I'm going to have to derive a formula that I know about. Area equals length times width. And with that, I'm going to plug in the information that area is 60. Length here is really W plus 4. And since this is one whole thing, it's a binomial, I'm going to go ahead and put it in parentheses. That way that entire thing I know is my length. And it's being multiplied by whatever the width is. And since it's a monomial, I'm not putting it in parentheses. Now this looks more familiar. This is almost a quadratic equation. We have to get it equal to zero in order to be a true quadratic equation. So to get started, I'm going to distribute W to each term. So I have 60 equals W squared plus 4W. Got to get it equal to zero. So what I do to one side of the equation, I have to do to the other. I'm going to subtract 60 from both sides. And now I'm left with a quadratic equation in which zero equals W squared plus 4W minus 60. Great start. Because now that I have the quadratic equation, I just have to factor the polynomial part of it, in which I need factors of negative 60, the reasoning why, the leading coefficient's 1, it's in descending order, and the GCF between all of them is 1. Three terms, so find factors of negative 60 who add up to positive 4. And the winners, since the B term's positive, the bigger one gets the sign. The other one will have to be negative. 10 times 6 is negative 60. Well, 10 times negative 6 is negative 60. And 10 minus 6 is positive 4. Still equal to 0. Now I use the principle of zeros, which says if I have a product, in which I do have a product hiding between these two, equal to 0, the first piece either equals 0, or the second piece equals 0. So one or the other, or maybe both at the same time. Who knows? We'll solve for w for each one. w equals negative 10, or w equals 6. 
Now I need to remind you that we are going to think about this problem in what the wording was from earlier. So it's a real life problem. We're well, kind of a real life problem. Who does this? But we're mathematicians said we had to. So the length of a rectangular frame is four centimeters, blah, blah, blah. I'm talking about a rectangular frame, right? That's something I noticed there in all the words. And if I was saying I had a picture frame that was negative 10 centimeters, you'd probably look at me and say, what? Like, I don't understand that. Negative 10 centimeters? Did you mean 10? No, I said negative, which makes no sense in the real world. So we just throw that answer out. Because remember, it was an or, one or the other. Negative 10 is not logical. But 6 centimeters is logical. Now this is nice, the width is great, but I also need to know the length of this thing. And if you remember, the length was width plus 4. At least let me double check it was. Yep, it was. So, and it's a coincidence this is occurring, where length equals 6 plus 4, which gets us positive 10 centimeters. Just a coincidence that it happened to be the opposite of what the answer we tossed out. It doesn't always happen. So we have our width and we have our length. Now this question, being the cruel question it was, didn't want any of those. It wanted us to find the perimeter. And we know the formula for perimeter, so we're going to plug in the information we found into the formula for perimeter. So perimeter equals 2 times the width plus 2 times the length. And we have 12 plus 20 gets us 32 and perimeters units are centimeters, just the singular unit, area is centimeter squared. So this is our final answer and we are done. I'm going to end the video and do a couple separate more word problems, so uh, tune into other word problems if you want to, otherwise this is the same method for every single problem. In fact, before I end it, let me just recap what all word problems are going to do. They're going to assume you know something, right? So, uh, and hopefully it's a formula of some sort. Assume a formula. Be it area, for example, or maybe they might assume perimeter. Sometimes they might assume that we know geometry. And I didn't spell perimeter right. Sorry about that. Ah, uh, this is a mess. Assume perimeter. Or they might assume that we know like Pythagorean theorem, a squared plus b squared equals c squared. So something of that nature is assumed. Wow, this is not my day for spelling. So pretend I spelled all these words correctly. That's the first thing that they're going to do. That there's some prior knowledge. The next thing that they're going to make us do is get at a quadratic equation. We might have to manipulate the problem a little bit but we will get it in the format where we have a quadratic equation. Once we have the quadratic equation, we are going to factor, that's our third step, the polynomial. And then once we factored it, we are going to use the principle of zeros. And our last step is just to check if this answer we get from the principle of zeros makes sense for the problem. Like sometimes we'll get a negative answer, sometimes it doesn't make a difference if we do or don't. So just check if you answer the question. So check if question is answered. Ah, Once again, please pretend I know how to spell. Apparently I just can't do it today. So those are our steps. I'll do another problem and post it in a different video to reassure you. So until next time.